Celeb reality shows, they are the pinnacle of Saturday nights. Now, if I was ever opportunity, had an opportunity to do three that I'm going to talk about today, would I do them? That is the whole premise of this video. This is the whole premise of this channel update. Hello there guys, I'm Coaster Shell, Doncaster born, but built for Theme Park Factual Entertainment, and welcome to this channel update. Now I released the first one, which you can go and check out, uh, which was basically me talking about what projects I would do in 10-15 years time. Uh, so things like books, tours, meet and greets. I was speaking all, all about that, but I said in that video I was going to do a video where I was speaking about TV reality shows that I would do. Uh, and I picked three. I did do some research. I, I did see more than three. Uh, but there's three that I would do um, in, what, 10 years, 10, 15 years. Again, you're looking at that 10, 15 year time frame. So this is just me just being open and honest and just telling you guys what I would do. And also, I encourage you guys to comment down below. If you were the opportunity to do this, would you do it, basically? Uh, so... Like I said, this video is all about being completely open, honest, and just sharing you my thoughts and feelings about each individual show. Because um, to be fair, this isn't just me saying, well, if I was offered this opportunity, would I do it in a heartbeat, yes or no, or 50-50. But it's also an opportunity for me to introduce you guys that may not know these shows, to tell you all about these shows. Uh, and I encourage you to watch the shows. I encourage you to watch the clips on YouTube. I encourage you to watch... Uh, full episodes on the iPlayer or the ITV Hub if they've got them on. Um, I'm not sure if they've got the um, one of the well, two of the shows are on ITV and one's a BBC. So I'm not too sure if they've got full episodes on ITV Hub, but I'm sure like Daily Motion and something like that will have full episodes. I watched the, I watched the last year's final of one of the shows that I'm going to talk about today uh, back over. So that was on Daily Motion. So you can probably go and watch full episodes on there. But Let's get started before I waffle on anymore. So, the first reality show that I would do is a show on... I'm going to speak about ITV, first of all, before we go on to the BBC one. So, there's two on ITV. So, the first one I would potentially do, um, but I'd say it's the least likely of the three, is Dancing on Ice. Now, Dancing on Ice, if you didn't know already, I'm going to talk to you about uh, what the show's about, what kind of things included, um, things like that. So... I kind of call it Strictly on Ice. That's kind of what I describe it as. So basically, Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield present Dancing on Ice, which is a legendary show. It get, Basically, the whole premise of the show, in a nutshell, is celebrities, soap stars, any kind of personality in the public eye are invited to audition down. I did see, uh, I think it was yesterday it was reported, that a load of people were pictured going into... Uh, auditions for Dancing on Ice. There's a second wave of auditions coming as well with a lot of people rumoured to be taking part or auditioning for the show. Um, and basically, it's basically celebrities being taught to dance on ice. That's why it's called Dancing on Ice. Maths, everyone. Um, but, like, they dance with a prof like a professional skater. Like, it's, again, it's I say it's like Strictly Come Dancing, but it's on ice. So... Basically, it's celebrities getting taught by a professional skate dancer, I guess. And they do these routines, they've got these tricky lifts. You know, you have to, you basically have to learn to skate, first of all, on the ice, which, you know, that, this way I say it's the weakest one of the three that I would do because, for one, I can barely skate on ice, let alone dance on it. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't probably go with this one. So, um, well, if I was me, I wouldn't go with this one. But um, if you guys can dance on ice, then if you get off the opportunity, then I would take it if you want to do it. So, um, but no, dancing on ice is fun to watch. Not going to lie, it's fun to watch. Um, it's great to watch. Uh, Holly and Philip, they're amazing, obviously. Uh, they're TV legends. Um, the judging panel is very harsh sometimes. I know the original show had Jason Gardner. Uh, obviously, he's not on the show now, so um, I know last year they had John Barrowman replace him, I think. Uh, and they've got Ashley Banjo and they've got Torval and Dean, basically. That was, that was the judging panel, I think, from last year. Ashley Banjo from Diversity won BGT, Britain's Got Talent, back in 20, 2009. Uh, Torval and Dean and John Barrowman, who is fabulous. Uh, <laughs> that's the best way I can describe him, because he's a great guy. But, yeah, that was the judging panel, and basically they just... They do these... Uh, routines dancing on ice basically and obviously it's like a public thing so one gets voted out each week uh but two have to dance i think two have to skate off in the skate off i think it is um so 
you know, it's pretty much strictly come down to see, but it's on ice, really. So, um, like I said, that one I would, that would be the least one I'd do. That could change in 10 years. I might be a um, better state skater than I am now. Um, and I'd probably, if I got the opportunity 10 years later, I'd probably say, yes, maybe. Um, or the opportunity to audition for the show, I'd say yes. But... You know, I think at this stage, with how bad I am at skating, let alone dancing on it, I would probably say no, because um, I don't think I'd be... I, I'd probably make a mockery of myself, let's be honest. But, uh, again, like I said, I can hardly skate, even before dancing on it, so, on the ice. So, you know, it, it won't be something I would do. Um... But like I said, like I said, these are things that I would do in 10, 15 years' time if I got offered the opportunity to do them. So again, it could change. But I think that if I if this channel was like massive now and they offered me the opportunity to do it next year, I would probably say no, because I can't skate at the minute. So I would wait until I'm better at skating or I'd go skating a bit more often to get used to it a bit more. And if I got better and I felt more comfortable that I wasn't gonna fall over all the time, I would probably say yes in like fifteen years. So, you know, it's one of those shows, really, that I probably wouldn't have the courage to do now, um, if the channel was massive now. Uh, so the second show, and this is the first of the two that I would do the most. The, these ones I'm not too, you know, afraid of. And it's called, it's a show called I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. So basically, if you don't know what this show is about, basically, uh, it's usually about 10 to 12 celebs. Um, or it, it, sometimes they're not even celebrities. Some people are reality stars. They are uh, politicians. They are singers, actors, actresses, uh, models. Um, someone who's been in the headlines um, for different things. It could literally be anyone. It could literally be anyone with a public presence. And it's usually around 10 to 12. They get invited to do this show in Australia. It's based in Australia. Anton Deck of the Presenters, again, like Holly and Philip. Absolute legend. Um, and basically, they do these bus, basically called Bush Tucker Trials. So, it could be eating a cockroach. It could be eating a scorpion. It could be eating uh, different things. And that would be one trial. Another trial could be laying in a casket six feet under. And you're going to get bugs poured onto you. And you have to survive every two minutes. And you earn a start every two minutes you're in there. And it's... Um, so the trials could be, you know, fearful, they could be endurance challenges, they could be literally, these trials could be anything. But that's not even the half of it. Like, you, like we as the viewer watch the watch these guys for about an hour and a half every night. About an hour to an hour and a half every night. But it doesn't stop there for them, because they're in the camp 24-7 for the next three weeks. So they go through the daily struggles of surviving on rice and beans... And having one good meal if they win enough stars. That's literally what they do. Like, we see about an hour to an hour and a half of it all. But they do 24 hours, three weeks of hell. Depending on who's there for the full three weeks. Because, of course, at some stage, you'll start to get people voted out. And then you'll get your final two who do the full three weeks. And, of course, the final four do this thing called the Celebrity Cyclone. Which is my, one of my favourites to watch. Um... And, you know, it's not completely out of the question. I mean, Scar look at Scarlett Moffat. She did Gogglebox um, years ago. And she, um, you know, she was a fan of the show. And, you know, she ended up doing it and winning the show a few years ago, just a few years ago. So, you know, it's not completely out of the question. Now, in 10, 15 years' time, if I was offered the opportunity to go down to Australia and do the show, would I do it? And... I said in the live stream that's now gone, I said I'll be 50-50 about it, and I said to you in this video I was going to be completely honest about it. I'll be completely honest and say I'm 50-50 over whether I would do it or not. Um, I would do it because it's it's an opportunity to be yourself. Like, it's, it's not just a physical challenge for this full three weeks, it is a mental challenge. So... You can't hide away, you can't be a person that you aren't in front of the public eye because you, you, you get caught out straight away. You are pushed to the limits where you have to be yourself. I've seen that with many contestants. You have to be yourself. And, you know, 
I'm very happy to be myself, but I know, like other people have been, I would be pushed to my mental limits. You know, there'd be some days where I could cry. There'd be some days where I'd laugh. There'd be some days where I'd be scared out of my pants. But, you know, so it, and I'll admit it, some days, the pressure of that camp life could be very bad, and I could break down and cry. I, I, I'm not going to lie, I could. But it's one of those shows where would you be willing to risk... Would you be able to put on your thick skin and risk breaking down under the pressure? And that's that comes into the, the other side of it. Well, why wouldn't I do it? And I think it's because I don't... In 10, 15 years, I may not still have a thick skin yet. So I may not have the thick skin to deal with anything that pressureful. Like the trials, like the um, different eating challenges or anything like that, or just camp life in general missing home, missing my family, missing my friends, missing the people I love. It's one of those things where it's a 50-50 where I would do it, but thinking about it, why couldn't I do it? So it's one of those where I'd, I'd love to do it. I, in 10, 15 years, if I was off the if this channel was massive, in 10, 15 years, if I was offered the opportunity to do it, I would take it in a heartbeat. But thinking about it would make me doubt myself. It would make me doubt that I could do it. So, and like I said, one of the main negatives around doing it would be, you know, homesickness, missing friends, missing family, missing home, life, missing all the things I love, all the people I love. It would be a struggle. It'd be an absolute struggle. And I said earlier, I would probably break down and cry some days, but it shows you as you. You don't hide under a persona or a facade or anything like that. It just, this show makes you be you and yourself and it makes the public fall in love with the person you are so you know it's one of those thick skin shows so i'm a bit 50 50 with that one but like i said i probably accept it in a heartbeat and then think about it and start to have doubts and wonder what the hell i'm doing um the final of the third shows is the bbc one now this is a brilliant show that i've watched ever since it started like i'm a celebrity i watched it since it started uh, it's called Strictly Come Dancing. Now, I've done a video on Strictly Come Dancing before on the channel. I did the um, what theme park rides would represent Strictly Dancers. So, uh, I did Wicker Man for a fiery pass at Obley, And you can see that whole video. You can see that on the channel. It was only uploaded about a week or two ago. So, you can see that video on the channel if you want to. Uh, go ahead and watch it after this. Uh, but Strictly Come Dancing is a show like Dancing on Ice where celebrities get taught to dance by professional. They get partnered up with a professional. It was originally hosted by Sir Bruce Forsyth, the legend, the late Bruce Forsyth. Rest in peace. He's a brilliant guy. I wish I had the chance to meet him. Um, of course, now it's hosted by Testalia, who was there from the start with Bruce, along with Claudia Winkleman. Uh, and, of course, on It Takes Two, for the last two years, it's been Zoe Ball and along with Rylan Clark Neal. Um, and basically, yeah, it is celebrities get invited onto the show. And basically, I'm not too sure if they get invited, like I'm a celebrity, or they, it's like Dancing on Ice, where they get involved in some kind of like tryout session or something. I'm not too sure how it works, but um, if you're on the show, basically you get partnered up with a professional dancer. Every single week, the professional dancer will go, will take you through a routine. It could be a Charleston, it could be a tango, it could be a Paso Doble, it could be a couple's choice where it's contemporary, street, jazz, it could be anything like that for the contemporary dancers. And, again, like it is, the first week, no one goes. The second week, and then from then on, it's one person. Now, obviously, there have been contestants that have quit in the past. There's been contestants that have got injured and that to withdraw in the past. Obviously, the, the, the big thing last year was, of course, uh, Will Bailey's injury. And, of course, Jamie Lang, who had to you know, forfeit right at the start and was replaced by the overall winner, Kelvin Fletcher, uh, to be partnered with Ote Mabusi. Um... This show, I think, is the most likely I would do. Um, dancing on ice, I'd need time to skate, let alone dance on it. I'm a celebrity, I'd be 50-50 and have doubts. Strictly would be the one I would love to do the most, because it's, again, it, you know, there's all these things about the Strictly curse, and, you know, all these different things, you know, relationships backstage, and all this nonsense, but... You know, it's one of those shows where you step outside your comfort zone and you try something new and you just have fun. It's it's a chance to have fun and learn. And to be fair, compared to I'm a Celebrity, it's a longer process. Like Dancing on Ice, it's a longer process. 
it's literally strictly would pretty much take up three or four months of your life pretty much and it would be towards the end of the year usually i'm a celebrity is usually you know around the end of the year as well uh and dancing on ice is this usually the start of the year which is around january um but the auditions take place obviously now but um strictly would take up about three four months of your life just before um it would start around about september and it would go right up until before christmas so you're gonna need a basically if you if you were ever you know famous for anything good and you were offered the opportunity to do strictly like take me for example if I, if this channel was massive in 10 15 years time like i said what, what was the timeline for these videos um and i was you know got i was got in contact with the bbc and they said right we want to invite you to do Strictly one of those years in 10, 15 years' time. Um, I would make sure that I would have a schedule that was completely open for those next three, four months because you you, you can't... You, you just keep pressuring yourself with so many projects then you won't be able to keep up and you need to keep practising, you need to keep learning the dances and, you know, it's a busy, busy three, four months because as well as the shows... Even before that, you've got the launch show, and then you've got two weeks to learn your first dance. So, you know, the launch show is massive, and, you know, and to be fair, there's a long-running theme here with Dancing on Ice, I'm a Celebrity, and Strictly. All those shows, as soon as you get announced to be on that show, or one of those shows, social media blows up, your public appearances get recognised. Um, because all three shows, among many other shows that are maybe not celebrity based, but they are other shows, they create such a public presence that you would get immediately recognised. Like, hey, that's that guy that's just been announced to do Strictly, or I'm a celebrity or Dancing on Ice. It's one again. It's one of those shows that has a big, massive public presence, and it's one of those shows that anyone would dream to do. And I would do it because, again, it steps out of my comfort zone. It's doing something different. Um, it'd be cool to learn how to dance, you know, because I'm going to be completely open with you guys, like I said I would, and the only time I've really danced that was actually decent was uh, in college, and it was a Hans Christian Andersen themed show, it was the end of my first year out of two, because uh, I did level three first year and second year, uh, and not level two, but I did, I decided to test myself, and I got in with a load of dancers, and we did like, um, um, four different types of dancers as one massive dance crew, but we did like four different types of dancers to represent four different themes in red in the story of Red Shoes. So, um, so or new shoes. I, I can't remember what the story was called, but it's something to do with shoes. But basically, that and learning that choreography and trying to own it on the stage. That was the only time I've ever danced. The ballroom and Latin stuff, I would be complete like many people, like nearly all the people, I would be completely oblivious to it. I would be completely new to it. I'd be an absolute amateur. Wouldn't know where to start. Um, I'd probably think American Smooth was a coffee, and I'd probably think a tango was a drink. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's, again, it's just one of those exciting risks that you'd want to take if you were ever up the opportunity. Like I said, if I got off of this in 10, 15 years' time, I'd take it in a heartbeat because it's one of those things where you'd want to take the risk you want to do it and you know the difference between this and i'm a celebrity is this one i wouldn't have as many doubts about doing because i'm a celebrity you've got the the mental toughness and having to survive it with strictly obviously it's pressure to go out week after week especially if you do two or three great dances in three back-to-back -back weeks you know that are all great you've got this pressure on you to keep building forward and if you do a bad dance the next week it could be a complete loss of momentum so it's one of those things where again you have to have a thick skin you have to have a a mental toughness to get back out of the gutter and back into the top form and again it's one of those shows where you dream of doing it so um there we go so that's talking about the three shows i would do i think if i would rank them like in order of how I want to do them. Um, Strictly first, I'm a Celebrity and then Dancing on Ice. But I think I'm a Celebrity is a close joint first to Strictly. But I think Strictly just edges it because I just want to do it a bit more. Uh, but that doesn't mean I don't want to do I'm a Celebrity less. Uh, it just means that Strictly is a bit more, less doubtful once you accept the offer. So, um... There we go. So that's just talking about these shows. And obviously for you guys that haven't seen these shows, it's a great way for you guys to learn. 
Uh, I've linked in the description down below. I've linked the Strictly Come Dancing YouTube channel, the I'm a Celebrity YouTube channel, and the Dancing on Ice YouTube channel. So I'd really check them all out, and I'd really have a look uh, at past years as well, because you can see the risks. You can see what people go through in these in these shows, these reality uh, celebrity shows. But like I said, in 10, 15 years' time, if they ever offered me an opportunity to do all three at some point in my future, I would do probably all of them. Um, but Dancing on Ice, I'd have to learn to skate more. I'm a celebrity, I'd have to grow a thicker skin. And strictly, I would probably need to do my research before I start the show. Um, but in my lifetime, those are three massive bucket list ticks I want to tick off in my lifetime. So, um, there we go. So that's just talking about what I want to do. Uh, kind of like the first video I did on this channel update series where I speak about the projects I want to get involved with uh, to build the channel. Um... But yeah, it was it was lovely doing this video. It's nice doing this video. Um, let me know if you want to, if you've got any other reality shows around the world that you want me to um, look at, then comment down below. I'll do a reaction video on it. I may do a reaction video series kind of uh, on all these three shows um, and sort of look at clips and sort of get an idea, more of an idea about these shows. Um, if you're able to do a reaction video series on that, but for now guys make sure you go and stay tuned because of course SeaWorld Orlando could be announcing something today Well potentially could be announcing something big today depending if it is the surf coaster or not So make sure you stay tuned for a video from that either today or tomorrow It will be out between those two days because of course it's an announcement and we want to be one of the first to report it uh, But for now guys, thank you very very much for watching this video make sure you like comment subscribe and for now, guys, my name is Aaron Chana. You've been watching Coast of Child, Doncaster Born, but built for Theme Park Factual Entertainment. And for now, guys, I'll see you in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day. Have a lovely week.